Welcome to the eighth part of my Adobe Lightroom Classic Masterclass. Now that we have finished editing our photo, it is time to export the photo out of Lightroom. And what exporting basically means is saving the edited file out of Lightroom so that you can share it online or print it out or do whatever you want with the photo. So let's jump into Lightroom and to start exporting, we have to go back to the library module and then select all of the photos that we want to export and you can select as many photos as you want to. So I'll just hit command A to select all of the photos in here and then click on export in the bottom left corner. Now the menu that pops up here might look a bit intimidating at first but it's actually very easy to understand. So once again let's start from the top and work our way down to the bottom. So in the export location you can select where to export those photos to. Now if we select specific folder from this menu we can then select which folder we want to export to by clicking on the choose and then just selecting the folder that you want to export to. Now if we click on this drop down here you can see the latest folders that you've exported photos to. Now if you want to create a new folder for your exports you can select put in subfolder and then just rename this and this will make Lightroom create a new folder and put those exported photos into that new created folder. Now the existing files menu is for photos that might have the same exact file name as the exported files have. So here you can select what to do with files that have the exact same file name. Next up is the file naming so you can rename your files while you're exporting exporting them out of Lightroom. And if you deselect the rename to option, your exported photos will also use the original file name. Now in the rename to drop down, you have a few presets, but the most power lies in the edit part here, which will tweak the custom settings that I have selected right now. So let's click on edit. So this will open up a new menu where I already have some settings, but I'll go ahead and delete them also. Just click on this box here and then hit delete a couple of times. And now we have deleted all of the options here. Now we can add any of these elements into the box here and that will determine the final file name of our exported photos. So let's add the custom text there and then for example the sequence there and maybe I want to add the month that it was shot on and then maybe the city that it was shot in. So we can just really build out what type of a file name we want to have for our photos through here. And the amount of options that you have in here through all of these different drop downs is just massive. But I think the most useful ones are the custom text, the sequence and the date options, depending on which type of a date option you want. But I would normally use like a year month date option like this one. So I'll just go ahead and delete the city and the date month option here. Now above this box, you can see the example name for your file names. And this is starting to get quite messy. So we can actually just type into this box. So I'll go ahead and create a line in between both of these blocks. So now it's looking a little bit better. Now, if you want to, you can also type anything else into this box and that will be added to the file name too. Now, if you really like these custom settings that you've created, you can create a new preset by clicking on this preset it drop down here and then going to save current settings as new preset. But if you're happy with the settings that you have but you don't want to create a new preset just click on done and that will create the file names for you. Now when you add a custom text block to the file name you can change the custom text from this part here. So here I could add photos for example and now that text will be added to all of the exported images. And in here you can also change the start number for the sequence. So I could for example type in 99 and now our sequence will start at number 99. Now if you don't really want to tweak the file names this much you can also use the presets here. So I think a custom name and sequence is a very good preset which is something that I very often use. So I could just type in tutorial and then have the start number at one and now we would get a file name tutorial and then the sequence number. So that's a very simple file name, but it also works really well. So this is the preset for the file name that I use most often in my exports. Now let's move on to the video tab and Lightroom really is not a video editing tool and you shouldn't be editing videos in Lightroom, but it does support some video file formats. So you can select to include them in your exports in here. But as I said, you shouldn't be editing videos in Lightroom. So you don't have to worry about the video exporting tab because you most likely aren't going to have videos in your Lightroom catalog. And next up we have file settings. So you can choose which image format you want to export to. And usually you would select JPEG, but if you want to, you can select any of the other file formats in here too. Now JPEGs are the standard for sharing on the web. So JPEG is what you would usually go with. Now in here, you can also change the color space and sRGB is technically the worst of these options but it's the most commonly used especially for web use and at least for me it's always been enough. I don't think I've ever exported anything other than sRGB out of Lightroom and I've never had any issues with the colors of my export. 
colors. So I think you'll always be fine with sRGB, but if you need to have a broader color space, you can select any of these other options in here as well. For example, if you're going to print out your photos, it might be a smart move to go with Adobe RGB, for example, to get some more color depth to your photos, because printing always requires a bit more quality out of your photos than posting them online to get them look exactly right. Now, next up is the quality slider, and this does exactly what you think it does. So going lower with the quality will make your image quality worse and going higher will make the image quality better. But a lower quality also means a smaller file size, which might be a good thing for, for example, websites, because you want the website to load up quickly. And while viewing on small screens, like on smartphones, you're really not going to see any noticeable difference in the quality if you just go a bit lower than 100%. Now you also have the limit file size to option here. So if you have a specific file size that you need to meet, you can do that by selecting this option here and then typing in the file size that you need to have for your exported image. Now this is in kilobytes. So if you have a one megabyte file size limit, you have to write in 1000 K to meet that one megabyte file size limit. Next up, we have image sizing. So if you need to resize your photos to a specific pixel width or height, you can do that in here. Now, if you don't select the resize to fit, Lightroom will just export the photos as their original resolution. But if you need to, for example, resize the photos for web use, you can do that right here. And you can export by width and height dimensions, long edge, short edge, megapixels, or percentage. So there's a lot of options how you can resize your images. Now the resolution selection here is always in pixels per inch or pixels per centimeter. And unless you're printing out photos, you don't really have to worry about this, but the higher the number is, the more pixels per inch a printer will print out of that photo, if that makes any sense. So you don't really have to worry about this, just leave it at a high number and you'll be good to go. You can leave it at 300 or maybe 240 or whatever the default is. I don't even remember anymore because I think I've changed it to 300, but just leave it at a high number and you'll be fine. You'll be good to go. 300 is plenty enough of pixels per inch, no matter what you do with your photo. Now with the output sharpening, you can sharpen your photos for screen, matte paper, glossy paper, and you can select the amount between low standard and high. But I never use output sharpening because I prefer to sharpen my photos in the develop module while editing the photos. Now with the metadata tab, you can select which metadata to include in the exported files. And next up, we have watermarking, which is a bit of a bigger panel, actually. It looks small, but when you click on the watermark and then you go in here to edit watermarks, you actually get a lot of options. So watermarks are basically your name or your logo as an overlay on top of your image to prevent people from stealing or misusing that image. And in here you can select a text-based watermark or a graphic-based watermark. So let's first use the text-based watermark. And down here in this box, you can type in the text that you want to have in your watermark. Now, if you want to change the preview photo that you see here, you can use these little arrows here to scroll through the photos that you're exporting. And down here, you can change the font, the font style and the alignment of the font. But the alignment only works if you have multiple lines of text. So let's just do this. And now we can align these rows of text. And in here, you can obviously change the text color as well if you want to. Now in here, you can also add a shadow to your text. So you can just tweak the shadow a bit with these sliders here to make the shadow look the way you want it to look. And in the watermark effects, you can change the opacity of the entire watermark, the size of the watermark. You can choose to fit the frame. You can choose to fill the frame. Uh, you can choose the location of the watermark and then you can further tweak the location with these inset sliders here. Now, if you need to, you can also rotate the watermark with these arrows down here. Now, if you want to use your logo as a watermark, you can also choose the graphic style watermark. So let's just click on a graphic here and Lightroom will automatically open up a file browser where you can browse to the logo that you have. Lightroom will accept JPEGs or PNGs for the watermark. So I have my watermark right here, which is just a piece emoji. So let's choose that. And now we have this watermark in the bottom corner and I can make it larger. I can change the positioning. Uh, I can also change the opacity of this watermark. With graphic based watermarks, you obviously don't have any of the text options and this text box is also grayed out. Now you can also change the size of a watermark by hovering over the image and then dragging from these corners here. So this will change the size of the image the exact same way as this size slider would do. And if you want to use this exact same watermark in the future as well, you can click on this custom drop down here and then save this as a new preset. And if this is a completely new preset and you click on save here, it will automatically ask you to save this as a new preset. So let's just save this 
right here. And then the last part we have here is post processing. And in here you can basically select to view the photo folder that you export the files into, but you can obviously just open the file browser on your computer and find the files that you've exported. So I don't think the post processing tab here is too useful at all. But once we have all of these settings tweaked, just click on export and Lightroom will do all of the job for you. And now that you have your photos edited and exported, it's time to share them with the world. So basically that is all for this tutorial series about editing the photos, but there is still one more part left in this masterclass where I will show you how to create presets from your edits and I'll give you a couple more tips as well. So I will see you in the last part of this series. Shoo.